Hi there everyone and how are you guys doing? Well, I just want to welcome you right here on ITTV for this mathematics lesson. And my name is Mr. Joel, your tutor for this lesson. So, all right guys, what have we learned thus far? We are at the chapter Earth as a Sphere and we have learned about the basic properties such as the longitude, latitude, time zones and etc. So it is very interesting just simply because the Earth is our home, right? Now let's take a look at what we are going to learn in this lesson. Firstly, Great Circle. Alright, so what is the Great Circle? It is just no ordinary circle. Let's take a look at this diagram. Alright, take a look at this diagram and you can see that there are three circles of latitude. Remember the latitude guys? Those horizontal lines ranging from east to the west. Now, look at the arrows and from there, we can see that there are two small circles. And we also have a great circle. And notice that the great circle happens to be a latitude which is also known as the equator. The great circle is the largest circle that can be drawn on the surface of the earth. The center of the great circle is the center of the earth. The most commonly known great circle is the equator. Alright, notice that when we actually hold the earth, alright, when we actually have it right beside us, we can actually draw many circles around the earth. But now, the great circle is the largest ever circle that you can ever draw on the surface of the earth. Now, take a look at one simple illustration right here. This is one of the characteristics of the great circle. So, notice that we have this circle in a three-dimensional manner. Now, if we were to split or to cut the circle right at the center, all right, we will get what you call as two halves, right? So that circle right down there in the middle, which cuts the circle into two halves, is known as the great circle. And if we were to just split the circle at another point, that circle right there at that splitting point is called the small circle. The great circle cuts a sphere into two equal halves, while any small circle cuts a sphere into a larger half and a smaller half. Alright, so that is simply the great circle. Remember, a great circle is simply the largest circle that can be drawn, right, along the surface of the Earth. A great circle is the largest circle that can be drawn on a given sphere. Look at a spherical ball played by the child. Alright, now let's take a look at this picture. Alright, what do you see guys? There's a child there playing with a sphere. Right, but notice that that sphere is actually just made up of many circles which are just aligned together and it is actually empty on the inside. But I want you to now take a look and focus on those circles all right, which make up this whole sphere. So those circles, right, no matter how they are arranged, are called great circles. Why? Because those are the largest circles that can be drawn. All right, or that can be formed from a sphere. So remember what is a great circle and how do you actually differentiate them from small circles. Can you see that it is made up of many circles? All great circles of this sphere have, firstly, the same circumference and secondly, the same centre as the sphere. All right, why do we need to know about great circles? Because it is simply part all right, of what we're going to take a look later on. So just remember what is a great circle. It has the same centre as the centre of the Earth and is the largest circle that can be drawn right on the Earth's sphere. Alright, so what are the great circles that can be found once we have drawn the longitudes or the latitudes? Firstly, the equator. The equator is the only circle of latitude which happens to be a great circle as well. Now take a look at this diagram. I want you to take a look at all the blue horizontal lines. All of them are parallels of latitude, right? But the equator right in the middle that separates the Earth into two halves is the only great circle which happens to be a latitude at the same time. Now, where are the other great circles? Meridians of longitudes. 
Alright, so every meridian or every longitude is a great circle. So we have many great circles now. Why? Because they are actually drawn from the north pole to the south pole, right? So it is actually the largest circle that can ever be drawn. So take a look at this diagram. We have seen this diagram previously. So all meridians will form great circles. Passes through the north and south poles, alright? So all these circles, alright? So the meridians of longitudes happens to be great circles. A great circle is a circle on the surface of the earth with the centre of the earth as its centre. Alright, so that is basically the characteristics of great circles. Now, let's take a look at this example. The great circle that passes through point X also passes through the north and south pole with O as its centre. Alright, now, we have a diagram right here. It is a two-dimensional right view of the earth. I want you to take a look at X. Now, if we were to actually construct a great circle that passes through X, it will look like this. Take a look at this diagram right now. So you have to draw a meridian from the North Pole, passing through X, going to the South Pole, and then making one more meridian at the back of the Earth, which cannot be seen and hence represented by dotted lines. So that is called a great circle, and that is how we represent it on this diagram. Okay, so now let us practice all right, how to draw great circles. Take a look at this example. In the diagram, O is the centre of the Earth. N is the North Pole and S is the South Pole. Sketch A, a great circle which passes through the point P, North Pole and South Pole. B, a great circle which passes through the point Q, North Pole and South Pole. So let's take a look at this diagram. Here is the diagram. And P and Q are points right on the Earth at whatever position they are at. Now, let's draw the great circle. Alright, so remember guys, what are the characteristics of great circles, alright? So, if we were to represent a great circle, alright, in this diagram which represents the Earth, notice that we have two points here, P and Q, but I'm not going to draw both great circles at the same time because it will overlap, it might be confusing a bit, alright? So, I'll just draw one by one. So, focus Q for later. Now, let us look at P. So, P is a point on the Earth. It is on the northern half, right? Northern hemisphere. But what I'm going to do now is to draw a great circle that passes through P. So remember that the great circle always starts from the North Pole. It has to pass through P and go all the way to the South Pole. So this is one half of the great circle. It is also called a meridian. And don't forget, you have to actually complete it. Alright, so I'm going to complete it by drawing dotted lines because these dotted lines are actually on the back part of the Earth which cannot be seen. So if you were to represent it, this will be one half of the great circle and on the other side or on the back of the Earth is the other half. So this is actually one great circle but because it is two-dimensional, it is this way. Alright, so remember the half that can be seen, solid line, dash lines for the half that cannot be seen but it must pass through P. Alright, now Q. Let's move Q to this diagram. Okay, so if Q lies here and we are going to draw a great circle that passes through Q, remember always start from the North Pole. Okay, and then draw a solid line that passes through Q all the way down here. Okay, and then don't forget that the other half, which cannot be seen, but yet it remains the great circle, alright, must actually be drawn using dotted lines. So can you guys see that it is actually a great circle, alright, on this side and continuing on the back, alright? So it is actually a three-dimensional thing, alright? But when we represent it here, just remember, so the great circle is actually the largest circle that can be drawn. And any meridian can be a great circle forming a great circle, all right, because it is the largest circle that can be drawn. Only the equator is a circle of latitude that happens to be a great circle if you compare it to other latitudes. All right, guys, now let's take a look at the next part of this lesson. Longitude of a location. The longitude of a particular location is determined by how far is the location from the Greenwich Meridian. Since the Greenwich Meridian is the reference point for any other meridian, other longitudes will be either east or west of the Greenwich Meridian. Now, just consider this point, all right? We have learned about the longitudes. They are actually those lines, all right, from top to bottom. But now we're going to learn how to read a longitude. Now, take a look at this diagram. 
remember that we have assigned the greenish meridian as longitude 0 degrees. So, every other point will depend on its position either on the east or on the west of the greenish meridian and hence we must determine the angle form. So, take a look at point A. Alright, so notice that the meridian where A lies actually forms an angle at the centre of the earth between that meridian of A and the greenish meridian. So, once we've determined that angle, we can actually determine the longitude of point A. Alright, now let's take a look at a few specific examples. Take a look at this diagram. Alright, and we have the greenish meridian right there. So, the greenish meridian will always be tall or given to us. Why? Because the earth is always rotating and the greenish, alright, when we pause it for a while, might be in different positions. So, notice that we have a few points, P, Q, R, S, T. And we have, alright, two given longitudes, 20 degrees west and 80 degrees west. Longitude of point P is 0 degrees since it is located on the greenish meridian. So, any point on the greenish meridian, it will have a longitude of 0 degrees. So, Q has a longitude of 0 degrees as well. R has a longitude of 20 degrees west because it lies on that longitude. S has a longitude of 80 degrees west because look again at the diagram and you can see that it lies all right, on the longitude 80 degrees west. Okay, what about T? If you look back at the diagram, the longitude of T has not been given but we can actually find it. Why? Because the longitude of T is simply 180 degrees minus 80 degrees east. So that makes it 100 degrees east. Alright, this is a very important property that we will be taking a look right now. Alright, take a look at these two points. S and T. Alright, so S lies on the longitude 80 degrees west. Now, notice that T lies on the meridian, which is on the opposite end of the meridian of S. So, T is located in the same grid circle as S. Alright, now let's take a look at the steps involved in determining the longitude of a point. Alright, so how do we actually determine the longitude? Because it is very important, it tells you the position where it lies, alright, compared to the greenish meridian. The following steps are very important. Step 1. Identify the location of the greenish meridian. Always remember this. Step 2. Determine the angle between the plane of the meridian where the point lies and the plane of the greenish meridian. So, first one, where is the greenish meridian? Secondly, what is the angle form? Step 3. Determine the position of the point either due east or due west of the greenish meridian. Alright, so to determine the longitude, only three steps. Alright, but now there is a special case right now that I want you guys to take a look at. Take a look at both these diagrams. Alright, on the first diagram on your left, if one of the meridians has been given to us, which is its longitude, x degrees west, the other half of the great circle, which means the other meridian, will have a longitude of 180 degrees minus x degrees east. And if we are given a longitude of x degrees east in a second diagram, the longitude of the meridian of the opposite or the other half of the great circle will have a longitude of 180 degrees minus x degrees west. This happens if both the meridians form the great circle. So the longitudes all right, of one of them can be found if we know the longitude of one of the meridians. Now take a look at this example that relates to the previous point. Take a look at this diagram. In the diagram, the point X and Y lie on the same grid circle. If the longitude of point Y is 70 degrees west, state the longitude of point X. Alright, now let me just show you how do you find the longitude of point X. Alright guys, now let us take a look at this diagram. So what we are given here is the Earth, right? So just focus on it, we know that this is the equator and alright, this is the Earth's axis and now we have a longitude which has been given. So this longitude of the meridian right here, where Y lies on, is 70 degrees west. And from here, given this longitude, how are we going to find the longitude of 
x. Alright, so it is very simple. It relates to the previous point. Notice that this meridian and this meridian actually form a great circle. This is on the front part that can be seen and this is on the back part which is always represented by dotted lines. So the previous point states this. If we know one half of the great circle, its longitude, we can know the longitude of the other half of the great circle, the other meridian. So because both of them form great circles, the longitude of X all right, is simply take 180 degrees minus 70 degrees. That will be the angle that is formed. But don't forget, you have to switch the position from west to east. So that is simply it. So evaluate this, it will be 110 degrees east. So guys, this meridian, all right, which passes through X, will have a longitude of 110 degrees east. All right, so remember this, all right, if you have two halves of a great circle, all right, if you know the longitude of one half or one meridian, you can know the longitude of the other half or the other meridian by simply taking 180 degrees minus that longitude and changing the direction. East becomes west, west becomes east. All right, now let's take a look at the diagram which involves all right, a few points at the same time. In the diagram, NGS is the greenish meridian and O is the centre of the earth. Given that angle GOL equals 100 degrees, state the longitude of A, the point K, B, the point L, C, the point M. Alright, so this is your diagram and I want you guys to now attempt this question, alright? So remember, you are supposed to determine the longitudes of the three points, alright? So why don't you guys just try this first? Alright now, so let's take a look at this diagram, alright? So if we take a look at this diagram, we are able to see that there are three points, alright? K, G, L and then there's a point M on the other side, okay? So what we're going to do is now just focus all right, on the angles that are given. So remember that these are the angles which are formed between all, right, all the meridians. And those angles will actually help us to determine the longitude all right, of all right, these three longitudes. Okay? So just remember, angles at the centre of the Earth. All right, firstly, let's determine the longitude of point K. All right, where is point K? Okay, notice that what we have here is the greenish meridian. It passes through G, all right, which is the Greenish Meridian, so NGS. So look at K. Is K to the right or to the left, all right, of the Greenish Meridian? Obviously, it is to the left, right? How many degrees is it from the left when we measure it from the center of the Earth? Take a look at this small angle, 50 degrees. So 50 degrees is the difference between the Greenish Meridian and the Meridian of K, right? So, in order to go from this meridian, greenish meridian to K, I have to move 50 degrees to my left. So, that makes the longitude of K as 50 degrees left means west. Okay? So, remember, you just have to analyze and remember those three steps. Firstly, where is the greenish? Secondly, what is the angle form? And thirdly, east or west. Alright, now, what about B? What about the longitude of the point L? L is right here. So notice that it is on the right-hand side or on the east of G. So in order to go from G to L or the greenish to L, I have to move 100 degrees because that is the angle form. So just look at the angle and L is 100 degrees east of the greenish meridian. So once we know that, we know. So guys, remember that the longitude is actually a measurement of all right, the position of any other point relative to the Greenwich Meridian. All right? So that's why the Greenwich Meridian is the reference point. Now what about C? All right, the point M. All right, so this is the easiest of all. Notice that M and L lie on the same meridian. So hence, it will have the same longitude. So if L has what you call as the longitude of 100 degrees east, M will also have, all right? So it doesn't matter how high or how low they are, as long as they're on the same meridian, they will have the same longitude. Later, we will learn that the only difference is the latitudes. All right now, guys, let's take a look at the next example. Sketch and label the meridians which have the following longitudes. 
80 degrees west and 100 degrees east. All right, how do we actually sketch it? One thing to remember. Both the meridians 80 degrees west and 100 degrees east form a great circle. Reason, because a 80 degrees added with 100 degrees gives you 180 degrees. So when you sketch them, it has to be on total opposite sides. So this is how you can sketch them. You can either sketch them, all right, using the first diagram, labeling them. All right, so if 80 degrees west, all right, is shown on the front, 100 degrees east must be at the back and use dotted lines. Now, if you choose the two sides of the earth, to display both the longitudes, it is actually better. So 80 degrees west on the left-hand side and 100 degrees east on the right-hand side. Remember, the only thing is that they must be on the total opposite side because they form a great circle, both the meridians, all right? All right, guys, let's take a look at the next part, all right, of this lesson, which is finding the difference between two longitudes. Knowing the difference between the longitudes of two points allows us to know the distance between the two points. If both longitudes are on the same side of the greenish meridian, the difference between the longitudes show the difference in distance between those two longitudes. If one longitude is on the east and the other on the west of the greenish meridian, then add both longitudes to find the distance between those two longitudes. All right, to just understand this point, let's go straight to an example. All right, I want you to take a look at this diagram. All right, so we'll be taking a look at it on the board shortly. In the above diagram, E, F, G and H are four points on the equator. Calculate the difference between the longitudes of A, point E and point F. B, point F and point G. C, point G and point H. All right, so now let me just show you what does it mean, all right, by the difference between longitudes. All right, so firstly, let us now understand the position of the points, all right? E, F, G, H, all of them lie, all right, along the equator, zero degrees, right? All right, so now, all of the longitudes has been told to us right here. So what I want you to do now is to understand that in A, we are supposed to find the difference between the longitudes of point E and F. So look at E and F. Alright, so what are the difference? What is the difference between the longitudes E and F? So it is just the angle form between, alright, these two longitudes. So what is the angle form at the centre of the Earth? So in order to do that, you just have to, first of all, make sure what are the longitudes of E and F respectively here, right? So if both of them are on the same side of the Greenwich Meridian, and they are because both of them are west, we can find the difference by subtracting the two angles. So the difference between longitudes E and F is simply 90 degrees. Okay, what about the difference between the longitudes of F and G? Alright, what are we actually doing is we are actually finding the angle form between these two longitudes, alright? So, we have to analyse their respective longitudes. One of them is 60 degrees west, another 15 degrees east. So, notice that west and east indicates that they are on opposite sides of the Greenwich Meridian. To get the difference, you have to actually add them. So, remember, same side, subtract, opposite side, add. And the difference between those two longitudes is simply 75 degrees. And you don't have to put east and west, remember, because it is just the difference in the angle at the centre of the Earth. Alright, and lastly, G and H. Alright, so G and H is right here. So H dotted lines means it is at the back. But don't forget that what we want is simply the angle form. Alright, so the angle form will be, take a look, G 15 degrees east, H 80 degrees east. So both are on the east side. As long as they are on the same side, take the larger angle, subtract the smaller angle and you will find that that is all right, the difference between the two longitudes. Alright, I want you to try this next example by yourself. In the diagram, E, F, G and H are three points on the surface of the Earth. E and G is the diameter of the equator. Alright, so take a look at this diagram. Now, the longitude of point H is, is it A, 50 degrees east, B, 100 degrees east, C, 120 degrees east, 
the 130 degrees east. Alright, so what is the answer? The answer is B, 100 degrees east. So just simply analyze the position and just remember what are the important properties that you guys need to know. Alright, so let's take a look at now one more example. The longitudes to the nearest degree of four towns are given in the following table. Alright, town and longitude. Paris, 2 degrees east. Athens, 23 degrees east. New York, 115 degrees west. Sydney, 151 degrees east. Alright guys, so what do we have here is actually the longitude of these four cities. Calculate the difference in longitude between A, Paris and Athens. B, Athens and New York. C, New York and Paris and D, Athens and Sydney. I want you guys to try this. So remember, difference in longitudes means what are the distances all right, between those two cities. And remember, same side, subtract, opposite side, add. All right, now let's take a look at the solution. For A, difference in longitude between Paris and Athens, 23 degrees east minus 2 degrees east, 21 degrees. All right, so that is the difference in longitude. Remember, it just tells you how far are those two points from each other. B, difference in longitude between Athens and New York, 23 degrees east added with 115 degrees west. So the difference is just 138 degrees, no east or west because that is just the angle. C, difference in longitude between New York and Paris. 2 degrees east added with 115 degrees west, 117 degrees. All right, so the larger all right, the angle, the further those two points are from each other. So the difference in longitudes are very important. It tells you all right, the distance. All right? And D, difference in longitude between Athens and Sydney, 151 degrees east minus 23 degrees east. Difference in angle, 128 degrees. Alright guys, so now, let's take a quick review of what we have learned. Remember guys, these are the important characteristics right, of the Earth as a sphere. So what have we learned basically can be summed up by a few key points. Firstly, a great circle is a circle on a surface on the Earth with the centre of the Earth as its centre. Secondly, Longitude of a place is measured by the number of degrees it is away from the greenish meridian. Thirdly, the range of longitudes is from 0 degrees to 180 degrees west of the greenish. Thirdly, the range of longitudes is from 0 degrees to 180 degrees of the greenish meridian and from 0 degrees to 180 degrees east of the greenish meridian. Fourthly, all points that lie on the same meridian have the same longitude. And lastly, the difference between two longitudes can be determined by a subtraction method. Condition, both longitudes are on the same side. b addition method. Condition, one of the longitudes is due east of the greenish meridian. Another one of the longitudes is due west of the greenish meridian. So guys, that's all we have for you right here in this lesson. So I'll see you in the next lesson for more concerning the Earth as a sphere. So see you in the next lesson. Until then, it's goodbye.